Up we go into the wild blue yonder. Flying high into the sun. We've played some pretty fun games this year, but Operation Overlord from Virgin is one of our favorites. There's been a lot of stuff for the D-Day anniversary, and I don't just mean games. Hmm, that's true. I think I saw a kid the other day with a D-Day anniversary lunchbox, and I've been collecting the action figures and commemorative glasses at McDonald's. Well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but D-Day has certainly given us one thing, and that's a lot of games. Some of them have been rushed out to capitalize on the anniversary. Others are of surprising and revolutionary quality. Overlord certainly fits in that category. It's a king among flight sims. First, a little bit of background. D-Day didn't happen overnight. Before the full-scale invasion could occur, Eisenhower ordered the Allied Air Forces to go in and soften up Nazi-occupied France. Supply lines had to be hit. Military storehouses and bases had to be wrecked. And the dreaded Luftwaffe had to be weakened. And it's that part of the war, and not D-Day itself, which Overlord is all about. Overlord is a lot of things. It's hyped not only as a flight sim of revolutionary graphic quality, but also as a game that simulates the life of a D-Day fighter pilot and as a strategy game. Don't buy the part about simulating the life. That's just a reference to old Tangmere Station here. Between fights, you can explore this place, hitting the ops room, the tower, even your bedroom where you keep a diary. It's in the ops room that you can also plan your missions out in detail. And since Overlord supports a complete campaign game with every mission affecting the entire war effort in France, it does make this a genuine strategy game. But Tangmere Station isn't really much of a simulation of anything. It's just a nice way to dress up all of the menus. You can use the gatehouse to leave the game, for instance, and the tower to configure scramble missions. Where Overlord excels is exactly where you'd hope a flight sim would excel, in flight. The movement is smooth. The action has a lot of variety. Shooting trains, bridges, bunkers, lots of dogfighting. And you can fly Spitfires, Mustangs, and Typhoons, all of which are represented with unparalleled realism right down to the last work in flight. Naturally, the game supports all of the features you'd look for in a grade-A sim. Tons of different viewpoints, including swell side views, rear views, external views, and more angles than you could possibly care about, and more. Including capturing video footage from your flights. And features such as air brakes, which are common in other flight sims, but not historical for these planes. They're included as a friendly option to win you slowly from other sims. Only one part of the game really fails. The inside combat lock. Oh yeah, right. I forgot about that. Floating viewpoints to keep your eye on the enemy have never worked. They're always too disorienting without gravity and the real-life planetary referent to make the body know what the eye is doing. Virgin claimed that theirs was different, that it provided non-distracting visual reference that kept it from getting disoriented. Wrong! It's the same old story. It'll get you airsick without getting you off the ground. Too bad, but we can't be too hard on Virgin for that. The rest of the game is great, and we'll be exploring its other features for months to come. This one's staying on my hard drive for some time. Not to harp on the point too much, but this game is good. If you like flight sims, you cannot be without Overlord. It's realistic, detailed, requires a lot of strategy, and an agile hand at the controls. Not to mention a good notion of what dogfighting is about. And I'm not really a flight sim person, and I loved it. Bravo, Virgin. Bravo. We'll be right back after these messages. 